It's Thursday, October 28th, and it's time for your body this today morning news update. Officials at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital are reporting some emerging trends of concern. Not only is the Accident and Emergency Department experiencing a surge in the number of COVID-19 infected patients, but some are showing up at the care facility in critical condition. In some cases, some are pronounced dead on arrival. Director of Medical Services, Dr. Clyde Cave, made the chilling revelations. This highlights one of the concerns that we have been noticing is that people who are infected with COVID, sometimes the testing is um, not undertaken because the person or the family makes assumptions and thinks they can self-isolate and self-treat. And we know with COVID that unless you know what you're looking for, deterioration can happen very quickly. And if you don't have access to the appropriate medical care, mostly oxygen, but and in many cases medication, then people can go on to, uh, to die. Um, it's a serious disease, not something to be taken lightly. The Medical Services Director also revealed that 10% of pregnant women receiving routine tests before delivery are being diagnosed with COVID-19. We know that there is a lot of COVID-19 in our community at the moment. Um, we are seeing this, um, for example, when we test on mothers and their partners when they present at the time of delivery, because that's our protocol. Um, these are uh, people who are, are just pregnant, not necessarily symptomatic. Um, and every day we are now discovering, you know, usually at least one or two of our deliveries who are asymptomatic for testing positive, which puts it somewhere like 10% of um, women at the moment in Barbados who are about to give birth um, are being found to be um, COVID infection, infected. Um, and if you believe that that population represents similar characteristics as to the rest of the um, country, well, we do the max. A third Barbados Labour Party MP announces his retirement from active politics. After representing St. Michael North for more than three decades, Ronald Toppin is stepping aside and will not be contesting the next general election. Toppin, who is the Minister of International Business and Industry, made the announcement during a special branch meeting held at the Grisettes Primary School, Following in the footsteps of Minister of Health and Wellness, Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Bostick, and a minister in the Prime Minister's office with responsibility for culture and the National Conservation Commission, John King. Just as every journey begins with a single step, every journey also has a name. So I'm here this evening to, to announce that I'm not going to be contesting the next general elections. I have really put my everything into representing this constituency for over 27 years. And like, it said, like I said, it took me seven years to win the seat. So 27 and seven really is 34 years that I've really been at it in St. Michael North. Topping named the current branch president, Davidson Ishmael, as his hand-picked successor. The truth is that there comes a time when the same inner calling that pulled you into politics starts to tell you that perhaps now it's time to pass the baton. And I must say that I, after 27 years, I'm starting to feel that pull telling me to pass the baton. It's not easy, but as I just said, I will not be contesting the next election. But despite this calling and so on, I must also tell you that I would never have decided to step down um, and hand over and pass the baton unless I felt that I had a person to pass that baton to. Despite it all, 
I would have stayed on if I did not feel I had the person. And I must say that I think that I'm going to be handing over to someone who understands the standards set by this constituency and also set by me. And that person, of course, is no less a person than the branch president, Davidson Ishmael. For Bobby, this Chamber of Commerce and Industry is concerned about issues which are hindering private sector investment and ultimately delaying economic recovery. And President Anthony Branca has made a direct appeal to Prime Minister Mia Motley to step in and help provide some ease. He was speaking at the BCCI's Business Forum and Luncheon held at the Lloyd Erskine Sandiford Center on Wednesday under the theme Building Bridges for Successful Economic Recovery. We are however quite concerned at the slow progress in moving and improving our ease of doing business at the commercial level. With the only significant improvement to date being the improvement, the implementation of the Asikuda world, and even then with the implementation of that program, other government agencies are stalling the full benefit of Asikuda world due to their inefficient and bureaucratic processes. Aligned with the, ease, with the issue of ease of doing business is the slow pace of the digital transformation strategy. COVID-19 has clearly highlighted the urgent need for digital payments and services with government. Systemic inefficiencies across some government departments often retard the flow of business activities and frustrate new business developments. Branca said the COVID-19 pandemic had affected all areas of business. But if there is one common element among the business community, is that we all had to adjust the way we do business. As a result of cost and, productive and productivity challenges, due to positive cases in the workplace, there are many businesses who continue to struggle with cash flow issues. To this end, we need your support in asking commercial banks to consider restructuring of loans to take into account the reduced cash flows, and further, that your government legislate a Fair Possession Act that protects the mortgagor's equity. The duty-free sector has also been severely impacted by the lack of tourists on island, and our appeals to date have not seen any attempt to render relief. So I use this opportunity, this occasion, to again make the appeal regarding the implementation of local duty-free sales, which can stimulate some critical business activity for that sector this Christmas season. But Prime Minister Motley told the business community in a wide-ranging address that a lot of the changes needed depended on them. But we have to adapt how we live and how we do business in this country. And what does that mean for most of us? You have spoken about areas of concern to you, but we need to understand context before we even get to the specific areas of concern because the context is what is going to drive your behavior and what is going to drive our behavior and what is going to drive the behavior of ordinary Barbadians because a pandemic is fundamentally about behavior. Vaccine hesitancy is about behavior. Mixing with people is about behavior. Restrictions on movement is about behavior. And what we have first and foremost to accept as a nation and as a people is that we have the capacity to change our behavior and to change our expectations with respect to what we can do. We no longer live in a world where you can take for granted that what you want will be available when you want it, how you want it, if you want it. Because traditionally, our private sector has been protected. Protected before independence through colonial powers. Protected since independence by reason of many treaties and forms of legislation. But the one thing that we know now 
is that nobody owes us a living. And no one is going to give us anything. And that we need to earn our way through this world. And we need to rethink our purpose. And we need to rethink the urgency with which we act. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I am a daughter, and I am a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental, so at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic, and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses, and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. news from the region, the Pan American Health Organization revealed that the Americas reported over 800,000 new COVID infections and 18,000 COVID-related deaths over the last week, the lowest COVID figures in over a year. The organization's assistant director, Jabas Barbosa, told Wednesday's weekly press conference that there is reason to be optimistic given the latest numbers, but he warned that countries must remain vigilant. Across North, Central and South America, COVID infections are, and deaths are decreasing, with a few exceptions. Belize is reporting a sharp jump in COVID-related deaths in Paraguay, saw a doubling of COVID cases in the last week. Many of the Caribbean's larger islands are seeing downward trends, including Cuba, which for months has been managing a large COVID outbreak. But some smaller islands are just now reaching their first pandemic peaks. St. Kitts and Nevis, Barbados, Anguilla and St. And Vincent and the Grenadines are now reporting their highest number of COVID infections and COVID-related deaths. That's why it's critical that the countries continue to implement public health measures like and finally, a new international labor organization report found that the loss of working hours in 2021 due to the COVID-19 pandemic will be significantly higher than previously estimated. ILO Director General Guy Ryder made the disclosure during the release of the eighth edition of the ILO Monitor Report entitled COVID-19 and the World of Work. The global labor market recovery uh, in the course of this year, 2021, has actually stalled. Uh, it is flatlining. And that means that uh, our estimates for the year in its entirety is that the hours actually worked uh, this year will still be 4.3% below what were being worked pre-pandemic in the last quarter of 2019. So, you know, we're looking at a global economy which looks like it's bouncing back 5% growth or more. And yet labor markets are not getting back to where they were. And the deficit is very substantial. That's the first message. The second message is about the unevenness of the experience of recovery. What are we seeing? We're seeing, and I'm simplifying slightly, we're seeing the rich world, and I would add China to that, bouncing back quite strongly. Uh, they are uh, seeing a recovery which is uh, significant. And yet for the emerging and the developing world, that is not the case. They are really not growing. In some case, cases, they're going backwards. And so we're seeing evidence of what we call a great divergence. The rich world doing relatively well, but regrettably, the developing and emerging countries really going nowhere. And That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidestoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.